Before there was the IMSA Sports Car Series, America's biggest endurance racing championship, there was the American Le Mans Series. The brainchild of Don Panos, the American Le Mans Series, or ALMS, was created in 1999 in partnership with the ACO, with the goal of creating a new stateside endurance racing championship with the same set of regulations as the Le Mans 24 hours. If a team became champion, they get an automatic invite to race overseas in the big Le Mans race. Right from the get-go, several teams and brands flocked to the new series that would eventually mark the start of many drivers' impressive careers and would see a wide variety of cars compete, some more unique and legal than others. The calendar was quickly expanded for the 2000 season, going from 8 to 12 races. Somewhat surprisingly, all of the four new races weren't going to be run in the US. Most sport in Canada was at least on the same continent, but the ALMS also travelled to the Nürburgring, Silverstone and, in what would be the circuit's first and only endurance race, the Adelaide Street Circuit in Australia. The race in Adelaide was to be the final round of the season, which was almost entirely dominated by Audi. Whereas the 1999 season featured a year-long battle between the homegrown panels and German BMW, they were both blown out of the water by Audi's new R8. The only non-Audi wins were from BMW at Silverstone and Charlotte and Panos at the Nürburgring. But that was mainly because the R8 wasn't at those races, but rather the older R8R. The races the R8 did enter though were all won by it, including the last 8 races back to back. The number 77 of Alan Knisch and Rinaldo Dindo Capello would only have to complete 25 laps in Adelaide to win the championship. The race itself was special on many fronts. First of all, there was the venue itself. Adelaide had stopped hosting races on the large Grand Prix layout after a final F1 Grand Prix in 1995. A new shorter layout had been introduced in 1999 with the V8 supercar only Adelaide 500. But for the LMS season finale, which was to be twice as long, the full layout was resurrected one last time. The plan was to create a sports car racing foothold in Australia and to eventually expand with the dedicated Asia Pacific series. A 10-year contract was signed with Adelaide, so this was meant to be the start of a whole new adventure. Another reason why this race stands out is the date, the 31st of December, New Year's Eve. It would literally be the final car race of the century, the end of an era, which gave the organizers plenty of inspiration as to what to call the event. They settled on the race of a thousand years. The unique date did deliver some unique challenges. As with any street race, it takes a few days to set up all the barriers and infrastructure. This meant hundreds, if not thousands of citizens were forced to take severe detours on days leading up to the event, including Christmas Day. This understandably upset some people. But still, ticket sales were high and a total of 135,000 fans throughout the weekend were in attendance. So were 25 racing teams and their cars. Not every team who competed throughout the season made the overseas trip though. Most notably, the V12 LMRs from BMW Motorsport were absent. Still, three BMW M3s were present in Adelaide and would race against a plethora of 911s in GT class. BMW might have retired the V12 LMRs at the previous race to focus on F1, but while the last six-cylinder E46 race cars would compete in Adelaide, BMW back home was working on their 2001 secret weapon. In the prototype class, it was a pair of Cadillac Nordstars, Lola B2K10s, Audi R8s, Panos LMP1 Roadsters, one of which featuring a lineup of local heroes Jason Bright, David Brabham and Greg Murphy, and the brand new Panos LMP07, which would make its race debut. While the R8 of Piro and Bila retained its livery, the championship leading Audi of McNish and Capello was giving a stunning one-off paint scheme which turned the car into one big crocodile. Capello decided to give the corner workers at turn 8 an extra good look at the livery by running over the tall curbs breaking the suspension and slamming the pole-sitting car into the wall during warm-up. This put major doubts of the title ambitions of Alan McNish. Just two days earlier, he had injured his back and while he was declared fit enough for the race, barely, Audi now had to hastily repair his car. Luckily, the car was fixed in time for the 1000 km long race. Just two laps in, a new victim of the Adelaide bumps was made, with the brand new Panos LMP07 limping into the pits after driver Jan Magnussen reported a misfire. It didn't go back out on track. Mechanical and electrical problems would haunt the car for the rest of its short-lived career. The Audis quickly stormed off into the distance and McNish easily became the champion after completing the necessary 25 laps. He and Capello would stay in the lead throughout the whole race. While the racing itself wasn't all that spectacular in prototype class because of the Audis dominance yet again, that doesn't mean there weren't any incidents. On the contrary. 
One of the E46s also retired early on in the race, while the other one was doing rallycross-esque maneuvers. Multiple Le Mans winner Bob Wallach made a rare mistake in his GT Class 911 after cutting off the number 78 of Piro. The resulting damage, although minor, causing him to lose time in the pits and the championship. That wasn't the only traffic-related incident with the number 78, as three hours into the race, Piro slammed into the wall trying to overtake one of the Lolas. The car miraculously survived the hit and got limped back to the pits, where it would lose a significant amount of time, finishing P15 in the end as a result. Prototypes hitting the wall seemed to be a trend, as Greg Murphy did just that. Again, his car too was limped back to the pits for repairs and managed to finish the race in 9th place. While the top runners were hitting walls, the little Lola B2K10 of Conrad Motorsport was steadily running laps. It would finish an impressive second place. The podium was rounded up with the always impressive and dominant Orica Viper competing in GTS class. The race itself was won by McNish, who didn't actually complete the full 1000 km. None of the cars did. The flag was waved after almost 6 hours of running, with McNish having covered just under 850 km. The reason why was simple. Time constraints. If the race kept going at this pace, they would have kept racing past midnight. It would have been the only race ever to not only finish in a different year, but in a different century. The race of a thousand years was a great success, despite the logistical nightmare of setting up a racetrack during Christmas and tearing it down on New Year. The future looked bright, but in the end it wasn't meant to be. Just a month later, the planned contract was shredded for still unknown reasons, although strong rumors suggest funding and politics had something to do with it. Apparently, the V8 Supercar Association didn't want to share the spotlight with the big pseudo-international racing series and influenced the Australian government's decision as well. Lawsuits followed, but the issue was eventually settled outside of court. Whatever the reason may be, Australia and the world lost what could have been a new landmark sports car racing event. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it and subscribe if you don't want to miss out on the next one.